So this is a proof uh, that discrete students, discrete mathematics students learn early on in the semester. Um, we're learning structure and how to actually do formal proofs. So let's try this one. Prove that the rational numbers are closed under multiplication, which means to prove that if A and B are rational numbers, then A times B is also a rational number. Okay, so in order to do a proof, I'm going to start with the word proof to show that I'm actually starting the proof. And I'm going to do this as a direct proof uh, because there's not anything weird. These are all rational numbers that have a clear definition and uh, it's easy to do a direct proof. So I'm going to be, prove that if A and B, I'm going to suppose that that is true, are in their rational numbers, then I have to show that A and B is a rational number. Don't assume that. This is what you're trying to show. This should be the very last thing that you say that A times B is a rational number. But you do start out with the premise. Let A and B be rational numbers. All right, you start there. And then you use the definition of a rational number for each of those A and B's so that you can manipulate it using algebra. So let A and B be rational numbers. Then for integers, and you can call these integers whatever you want. Uh, you know, you just uh, stay, I don't know, stay away, stay away from like X, Y's and Z's or something like F, G's and H's just because of what they usually represent. But I'm just going to call them A and B be rational numbers and for integers uh, M, N, X and Y. We can say A is equal to M over N and b is equal to x over y. Why can we say that? Because that's a definition of rational numbers. Let's see, I have it on this piece of paper here. So definition four, a number n is rational if there exists integers a and b such that n equals a over b with b not zero. So that's exactly what I have. I'm given the fact that a and b are rational. Then I state, well, since they are rational, then there are integers that create this ratio that each of those letters are equal to. And of course, we should probably say that n is not zero and y is not zero. That's also by the definition. So now we're gonna to try to prove that a times b is a rational number. So let's consider the first half of what we're trying to prove. Think about a times b. Well, if I was gonna do A times B, and I know that A is M over N and B is X over Y, I would write, okay, that's M over N, just do some substitution, times X over Y. And if I just use algebra, that becomes MX over NY. Now at this point we can say, what do we know about MX and NY? However, MX, and I'm just gonna call it capital C, and NY, I'm gonna call it capital D, are also integers. Why? Because, make sure you state why, because the product of two integers creates another integer because integers are closed under multiplication. Now, oh sorry, you can see that here. So I'm taking the numerator and I'm considering MX and NY and they're integers because the product of two integers creates another integer because integers are closed under multiplication. Um, the textbook that we use in discrete says that that's an axiom. If A and B are integers, so are A plus B and A times B. So I'm using that fact here to make that statement. So at this point I can say A times B equaling MX over NY equals C over D, which is a rational number.
And that's kind of what I wanted to show. So now I make my conclusion. If A and B are rational numbers, then A times B is also rational. So again, a direct proof, and, and most of them that are direct work this way. You start with stating what kind of numbers you're dealing with, and then use the definition of that type of number to rewrite those numbers for a substitution process. You take into consideration what you're trying to prove, A times B, but you don't state it's rational. You use this process to show that that product is rational. So I take under consideration the thing that I'm proving, do my substitution, explain why this last number can be considered rational, and then you make your conclusion.